Damien Matt here, and I'm here with the birthday boy, Killer Kyle. Yes, today is my birthday. This is a monster. We're watching Dynamite, the first of, I guess, four nights of Fighter Fest. Now, I don't know if that's going to be over a four week period. Oh, I think I know. Or, like, Wednesday to Saturday. It sounds like they're gonna have an episode today, an episode on Rampage, and then maybe next week they'll do the same. Possibly, I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah. But so they're starting things off with Warblow against Orange Cassidy. Yep. I found it really interesting how they changed for Orange Cassidy's entrance theme. Uh, yeah. I guess they don't have the uh, Pixies number anymore, so they gotta use a different song. I guess, I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, this should be a good show. Again, we don't watch Rampage. I don't watch Rampage. So that's gonna suck. But yeah, when you went home for the Waterfront Festival, it was like, Oh, I watch SmackDown and then make a rampage afterwards. Mm. But and I put it on here because I thought this is where rampage would be, but it wasn't. Mm. So I don't know what channel it's on. Or even if it's on TV, it might be just to be or like all that a web share or web whatever thing on the internet like they do with like Dark, dark elevation, and uh, yeah. So stay tuned, and we'll be back at you in a second. Orange Cassidy, couldn't stand a chance. Are you fucking kidding me right now? It was a good match, though. Hell of a fight by Orange Cassidy, but it could be a. Uh, it was only a matter of time for power bomb and the win. I mean, no, it wasn't the Stephanie, but it was still Powerbomb 1, 2, 3. I mean, Orange Cassidy put up one fucking hell of a fight. As he always does. I know, and I mean, kicking out of an F10, it was like, fucking insane. And I mean, Wardlow's a face now, so obviously he's gonna show respect to Orange Cassidy and fist him and all that, so... But yeah, he really put up one hell of a fight. I don't think anybody can say that. I mean, comparing Orange Cassidy to, you know, Wardlow. Yeah. Well, that's where Will Ospreay has their championship. Their European title, UK title, whatever the hell it's called. Right. It looks pretty sick. Yeah, just has, uh, Pac defend the All Atlantic Championship in Rev Pro against. Yeah. I don't think it was. It, it kind of looked like Rosie Time Hotsu, but I don't think it was. No, it wasn't. I can't. I don't know. It might be Moxley's opponent tonight. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> and it looks like Chris Jericho coming out. I'm uh, saying Eddie Kingston's challenge for next week. Hopefully this death match won't be the shit. Well, the first one wasn't bad. The ending was actually climactic. Yeah, anyway. There it is. So there it is. It looks like we have Chris Jericho, who's going to be the pain maker against Eddie Kingston. In a barbed wire anywhere goes match? Yeah, they're calling it a barbed wire everywhere match. Yeah. So, like, barbed wire around the ropes, barbed wire around the post, barbed yeah. wire in the ring, around the ring, wherever they else they want to put it, the barricade, anywhere. Yeah. So that'll be very, very interesting. Yes, next we have John Moxley versus Tanaki. 
take a shooter. Yeah. <laughs> Takashita, I think it's how you see it. Taka, something like that. Take a shooter, nice. Well, if you look at the way his name, last name is spelled T A K E S H I T A. Oh, yes. So, like, I, I'm sure it's like Takashita, I think, is how you pronounce it. I just yeah. jokingly, just jokingly go, uh, take a shit out. Well, after all the matches that Mox has had with the New Japan guys in AEW, they shouldn't disappoint. No. So, hell yeah, brother. I mean, last week, defending the championship against Brody King, yeah. that was a hell of a match. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, mess up your ass. Max Lynch! It's the winner. Yeah, that was a hell of a match. Physical, violent, bloody, insane. Uh, this kid, mm -hmm. Takeshita, is one tough motherfucker. Yes. He took a boot to the face and got himself cracked open. He did a high five flow, that didn't get it. German suplex, that didn't get it. Yeah. What a crazy match this was. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, now we got the House of Black, we got Julia Hart. Oh yeah. They always have intense promos. Well, it looks like we have Claudio Castanoli versus Jake Hagar. This should be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Two guys that pretty much know each other pretty well. Yeah. Obviously. In fact, looking at last week's Dynamite, Jake mentioning WWE in a promo. Mm -hmm. So... This match should be awesome, so... In honor of this, put your hand over your heart. And repeat after us. We the people! What a fucking match. They know each other. Oh yeah, they know each other really well. They said they've had 11 matches. Claudio is up 8, well, 9, 4. Nine, four, okay. On, uh, well, er, yeah, I think this is what have been the 12th match, and Claudio just won as well, so it was like 9-4. Anyway, yeah, they've had several matches against each other, Claudio's won the majority of them, yeah. and, you know, as we made reference to the whole We The People thing, and them both being at WWE and what have you. Yeah, really, really good match. Yeah. And you would expect nothing less from two big boys like that. Oh yeah, and I mean, they almost look like they're the same height, I think. Yeah, Claudio's right. a bit smaller. Not by much though. But yeah, really fucking amazing match. And now you got Inna J versus Serena Deep. So... One thing that I would like to talk about just quickly. I asked Matt about it. We didn't really Oops. talk in depth about it. So we can get a little more in depth about it here. I said to Matt, what do you think of Luchasaurus being this more aggressive, physical monster, if you will? And he was like, I was just about to ask you the same thing. My opinion of it is, I don't mind it. Yeah, he, like, he's always been a very good athlete, very good wrestler. Now he's more dominant, more... Physical, more aggressive, more intense. I just don't feel like him as this unstoppable machine needs to be with Christian. Only because it seems like Christian is the mouthpiece and Luchasaurus is the mercenary, if you will. If they wanted to have Luchasaurus be this, you know, absolute wrecking machine, I'm sure they could have done it, 
either him on his own or put him with anybody else. Not saying Christian isn't the caliber of person, talent, whatever you want to say, to take Luchasaurus to that next level. He is, it's just with Christian being this smart mouth, arrogant prick that you talk bad about whoever he wants, whatever he wants, say whatever he wants. I mean, he talks shit about Jungle Boy's dad, he talks shit about Jeff Hardy. Luchasaurus had a match with Griff Garrison. Christian was talking shit about Brian Pillman. And it's like, to me, the two just don't go hand in hand. No, I get it. And I mean, if you watch Brian Zane's video, I just watched it. He's talking about Christian and about the whole thing with him talking shit about Luke Perry and Brian Pillman Sr. Right. I would think, you know what, maybe they would actually ask permission before they do that. I can't see them getting away with it, like, otherwise. I was talking about looking at more highlights from this show in Japan, but yeah, this should be a good match. Anna J versus Serena Deep, so stay tuned for that. As for Luchasaurus, I think that the black mask is pretty cool, yeah. obviously. But him as a heel, I don't know how long it's going to last before Jack comes back. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see about it. So, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Serena got the win with the Serenity Lock and wouldn't let go. And then you have Mercedes coming out and pulling off Serena. And these two are going to have a match with the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship, but that's before Dishonor. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's one of the good matches that we're going to see. I will obviously talk about it on Wheels of Fury. So or stay tuned match. for the yes. Young Bucks. Swerve and Keith Lee, Ricky Starks, and Rickhouse Hobbs. This is the AEW World Tag Team titles. And yeah, Swerve and Keith Lee, Young Bucks, Starks and Hobbs. It kind of sounds like one of those police bass. Joe, you knock on that Starks Keith Hobbs. Anyways. I think it'd be a good match. Yeah, I could see the young bucks retain. Yeah, most likely. Hell yeah. I figured seeing as how it was my birthday and it is main event time, we do a little Wheels of Fury play by play tradition. And as a gift from my man Matt here for my birthday, he gave me. Some Appleton Estate. Appleton Estate, man. Jamaican. Uh, and also, my mom gave me a couple of cupcakes. We got chocolate and a red velvet one. So, I figured Matt and I could have a birthday drink as well as a cupcake for my birthday. Now I know Matt and I did have quite the uh, celebration ahead of time for Matt's birthday, but I figured, you know what? We didn't really do much for his birthday on his birthday. So seeing as how it is my birthday, why not break out some alcohol, yeah. got some cupcakes and do a little uh, combined birthday celebration. It's after his birthday, but whatever. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Yeah, sugar and alcohol, two of our favorites. Exactly. There it is. Got the yeah. big fan here. Keep and guard. So 
that. The rum in the bottle. Now, when I had the bottle of gold rum, the Picardi, we mixed it, and so uh, I figured, saying with the Jamaican rum, why not mix her with a little Diet Pepsi? And whatever's left in the bottle, I can just finish later. Yes, sir. So, okay. Nice to go with you. Happy birthday, my man. Thank you, sir. Man event time. We'll catch you in a little bit. I'll be goddamned. Oh my god. Swerve in our glory just won the AEW World Tag Team Championships. I gotta say, good on them. Uh -huh. Hell of a fucking match. Yeah. I mean, these <laughs> individuals really beat the shit out of each other. They really, like, Worked well as a team. The referee gets knocked out, okay? And they tried to use the title to their advantage. Glad that didn't work out. They once had Keith Lee jumping out of the ring onto the other wrestlers, knocking Ricky Starks out. I thought maybe you would knock Ricky Starks out of the ring. You'd have the Young Bucks do really good teamwork, obviously. There was a point where you thought that Hobbs and Starks were gonna win. Thank fuck that didn't mm -hmm. happen. But yeah, yeah you, you take team champions. And you know what? That serves your way, Fence, because you could have had them as take team champions. You could have fucking had them as take team champions, and you couldn't even do that. The proof is in the pudding. Oh, that's it. So yeah, there it is. Night one. Week one of Fighter Fest is in the books. Night two of week one, I think it's this Friday. Yeah. And then, but until then, for Matt and myself, the birthday man. Yes, sir. Uh, we will see you on Friday. Happy birthday, buddy. Thank you. Bye guys. Hey guys, what's up? Killer Kyle, me and Matt, hanging out once again for Fighter Fest, week two, night three. They had night two last Friday on Rampage. They're starting things off with Darby Allen versus Brody King. This has turned into quite the rivalry. Oh god, yeah. Obviously, Miss Rampage might have to do that again. This match started off right away. Obviously, Darby Allen's got some beef with Brody King, so I can't wait to see how this goes. Obviously, Brody is like one of the biggest motherfuckers in AEW. Yeah, definitely one of the biggest dudes. And I mean, fucking Darby Allen, one of the most daredevilish. Professional wrestlers, there is. Right now, Brody King is dominating, so this is gonna be an awesome match. Yeah, they're going over some of the matches. They're gonna have John Moxley and Wheeler Utah versus the Best Friends. Gonna have Christian and Luchasaurus versus the Versity Blondes. Gonna hear from the new AEW Tag Team Champions, Swerve Scott and Keith Lee, FTR are going to hear from. Going to have, of course, the barbed wire everywhere match with yeah. <laughs> Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho. I know Matt's looking forward to that one the most. And yeah, we're off and going. We'll catch you up on other things and who wins when the match ends? We'll see you in a bit. Let's do it!
Well, as expected, Brody King had won this match. Uh, still a good fight, though. Yeah, it was pretty much. Like, Derby tried to put up a good fight, but it was more or less a one sided ass whooping. Yeah. And then you have Brody beating it up. You should have put Derby in like a rear naked choke. Dan came out, and then Malachi came out, and then they pretty much beat up Sting, and then Miro came out, and it's like. Okay, is he gonna help them or what? He just kind of he came out and started making his way down the entrance way, and then just kind of stood there. It's like, okay, that's kind of odd. Yeah, I don't know if he's gonna be a face now. I don't know. Anyways, right now we've got the Blackpool Combat Club. Versus best friends. Yeah, Mox and Yuda versus Trent and Chuck. So, should be a good show. Yeah. Well, Black Pearl Combat Club for the win. That was a really great match. Uh, yeah. I mean, John Moxley put a figure four on the outside. Yeah. Shit. I mean, yeah, I, they two different styles from Best Friends and Black Pool Combat Club, but yeah, take nothing away from these guys. Also, you got Wheeler Yuta versus Daniel Garcia for the Pure Championship on Saturday, shit. Yep, yeah, coming up this Saturday. So we'll be doing a prediction video on Friday for that. Hell yeah, brother. Well... That was, uh... Okay. Yeah. That was... Lame as lame can be. Yeah. yeah. Oh. You had Luchasaurus basically dominate and destroy the varsity bars. Yeah. And Christian takes in to get the pin. And let's take Jungle Boy's back. He's back! More to come. Well, it looks like that was a double turn. Yeah, they had Jungle Boy come out, and of course, Lucha Shorts got out of the ring. It's like, alright, they're gonna fight, and of course, Jungle Boy's got a chair, and just, at first, it's like, if I don't wanna do it, but if I have to, I will lay your ass the fuck out with this chair, and Lucha Shorts just stepped aside, like, They've been part of you no know, friends for as long as they've been together as a team. You know, it might, I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I dug the fact that, you know, Lucha Soros was this badass, motherfucking, unstoppable rocking machine. But, like, you know, Jungle Boy and Lucha Soros are, you know, Jurassic Express. Yeah. And to split them up, it would have been stupid. Yeah, especially because, I mean, Jack was injured, so... Yeah. He had to have something to do for the uh, jump, Luchasaurus. I dug the get-up with the black tongue and everything. I mean, I'm sure that still might happen, but... Yeah, I guess Jungle Express, or Jurassic Express, rather is back together. And now we have JR coming out for the second half of the show. Before that you had an any video with the ass boys. Yeah. Alright. So real quick, I guess the FTW championship. Ricky Starks and this Cole Cole Co card. Yeah. I don't think I've seen this guy before. No, I haven't seen him before. He's relatively new on the scene in AEW. I'm not sure where he would have wrestled prior to this. So, yeah. let's see what the kids got. Yeah, I don't see him win anyways. We'll see what this match will have. But yeah, Ricky Starks is going to beat this guy's ass, unfortunately. More than likely. Well... There it is, I guess we were right.
Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a complete one-sided beating. I mean, yeah. Carter put up a hell of a fight, but yeah, Recky able to retain. He even went old school. Yep. That was pretty fucking cool. I mean, well, he did his own thing, but yeah, it was still pretty cool to see that. Yeah. So there it is. And now he's talking. Yay! Shit. Yeah. yeah, so you had Ricky Stark throwing another challenge. Out come Dan Housen, and it's like, hey, I'll challenge you for the championship right now. And Stark is like, no, 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 not now, not now. We'll, we'll do it next week. It's like, uh, of course, Jeff will heal fast. And, and so next, you're going to have Athena and. Willow Nightingale versus Jade and Kara Hogan. You've got right now Athena and Willow and Statlander talking. So. Kyle, cut, cut the shit. It's gonna be a good match, everyone. I can't wait to see Athena, Willow, Nightingale. You know, it's funny how you have Roxy, well, Roxanne on NXT now. In a bad storyline. But this three way match is gonna be awesome. A take team match. Who do you think is gonna win? I'd like to see Athena win her. I guess you call it debut match. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, you know what? That would be awesome. I mean, those three together, that is amazing and I think that Willow Nightingale you know I seeing her in Ring of Honor and those matches were pretty cool obviously she had some good matches here I think this is gonna be awesome too so yeah it's just a wait and see I guess that bitch and you are a winner yeah, Kira Hogan and Jeez. Wow, what a match. Yeah. I didn't necessarily realize that Athena and Stealthy were the same height. But yeah, color coded team as well. Yeah. Fuck, but that was, was a good match, obviously. And you kind of figured Jade Cardhill was going to win for her team, but right now you got Team Thunderstorm. Yeah, Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa. She's talking about title defense, I think, or something. Uh, yeah. Now you got Rick Baker and uh, Jamie Hader come in and do, you know, interrupt like last week. And so I guess they're going to have a tag match. Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm against Rick Baker and Jamie Hader. Yep. Yeah, and I will have to watch Rampage for the other Fighter Fest, but yeah, that's going to be awesome. Oh yeah, Rap Battle as well, so very cool. Before we go any further, they're talking about Death Before Dishonor, but also pretty soon, Fight for the Fallen. Yeah, you're gonna have Dan Housen, of course, challenge Ricky Starks to the FW Championship. You're gonna have a, uh, another match, more matches to be announced for Fight for the Fallen next week. Yep. So, and uh, main event time coming up. Here in a little bit, the barbed wire everywhere match. Fucking a. Oh yeah, buddy. Gonna be a bloodbath, I feel. <laughs> Figured once again, seeing as I was main event time, we do another main event drink. Yes, sir. That's before dishonor, but also pretty soon, fight for the fallen. Yeah, you're gonna have Dan Housen, of course, challenge Ricky Starks to the FW 
championship. Gonna have a uh, another match. More matches to be announced for Fight for the Fallen next week. Yep. So and uh, main event time coming up here in a little bit. The barbed wire everywhere match. Fucking a. Oh yeah, buddy. Gonna be a bloodbath, I feel. <laughs> Figured once again, seeing as I was main event time, we do another main event drink. Yes, sir. The small number seven, Tennessee's finest. So, little sour mass, Jack Daniels, whatever you want to call it. Tennessee whiskey. Yeah. Guys even got the bottle open in one hand. Didn't quite work. Yeah, brother. So here's two and a really good few weeks of Fighter Fest. Here's to a really great man event. I know it's going to be a great man event, and it's just, like I said, it's probably going to be a bloodbath, and it's going to be fun to watch. Hell yeah, brother. So, we're about to get into it, and I'll keep the bottle out, because I got a feeling we'll probably need another one yeah. afterwards. Yeah, we will. So, that's three of you. That's three of you. Hell yeah. That's what I'm they had Justin Roberts do, say, you know, main event, barbed wire everywhere match, Jericho Priest and Society, has got to be in the shark cage, and the microphone he's holding has got fucking barbed wire wrapped around it. Like, holy hell. Yeah, brother. This is going to be a fucking war. I can't wait. I mean, surprise Justin Roberts didn't, like, scrape his lip on it. Like, mm -hmm. I can't wait, man. This is going to be... Amazing. And I mean, these matches are always amazing. Barbed wire everywhere match. Yeah. Do you think they're going to be suspended in the air? Oh yeah, most definitely. Now, he didn't give an introduction like he did for the Anarchy in the Arena match. You know, like, ah oh, shit, it's about to hit the fan or whatever. Although, I mean, for cable television, we'll call it, I guess you can't really get away with that, but... Anyways. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Anyways. I miss him saying that too, actually. On with the show. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, what a match. That was everything you would expect it to be. I thought it was going to be a little bloodier yeah. than it was, but, I mean, you had... Ty get involved, Anna J get involved, lower the cage, the rest of the members of the Jericho Appreciation Society. Yeah. Get out of the cage, start beating on Kingston. Here comes Ortiz and Wheeler Yuta, they're fighting and the match goes on and you know, it looks like Kingston's gonna get the win. Here comes Guevara, Judas Effect, the barbed wire. Wrapped around Jericho's arm, he gets the pin. Kingston takes care of both of them, throws out Sammy, and then throws Jericho through a barbed wire. Fucking spider oh, That was a sick match. And I mean, Jericho still has it. Oh, he yeah. did everything he used to do in WWE and WCW as a cruiserweight. It was just a fucking amazing match. And they don't get enough of that in mm -hmm. other companies. But yeah, AEW does it the best. So that being said, hell yeah, brother. Well, it looks like we got Dark Side of the Ring. No, we're creating donation with. Wow! Oh shit! Yeah. Oh yeah, right. I might have seen that. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, so this has been night two, week two of Dynamite of Fighter Fest 
Yep. Shark Week or whatever. So for me, Matt. Trailer Kyle. Yeah, we won't talk to you. Next all. Friday. Yeah, Friday. Death before dishonor. We do our video. Yeah. Hell yeah. Dear says. Peace. Cutting WCW was a long time coming, but you know, I think that there's this myth out there that Jamie Kelly took pleasure in cutting WCW. I don't think that's the case at all. If you look at some of his earlier interviews, like 